Hi there, I'm Becca Puglisi, one of the creators of One Stop for Writers, and I'm here today to show you an overview of our character builder. As we all know, creating characters can be a lot of work, but it really is necessary if we want to understand who they are, what they want and need, and how they're going to behave in the story. The tool I'm going to show you today simplifies the character building process by putting everything you need to know about a character right at your fingertips. So to start a new profile, just go to my workspace and create a new character builder. I'm going to switch to one that I've already created because that's going to speed things up and just make it easier for you to see how this works. I actually created this character using the character building tool. Angela and I both used it to start new characters from scratch and we're really stoked about what it can do. You see here the main characterization tabs across the top, which we'll be exploring in a little bit. The librarian's notes are in this sidebar in case you need help figuring out how to navigate through each tab. I also want to point out these icons that appear on every page. This first one takes you to a completed profile, so you can see what that looks like from start to finish. This can be good if you're needing help putting some of the pieces together. This icon allows you to clone an existing profile. So let's say you're writing a series and you've built a profile for the main character in book one. Most of that information is going to be the same. His physical details, backstory, etc. But maybe he has a different motivation in the second book, or he's struggling with a different wounding event. Instead of starting over from scratch, you can create a copy of this profile. Then all you have to do is rename it and make any changes. So that's definitely a time saver that you'll want to keep in mind. This box you'll see at the top of every tab, and it contains the basic information for your character. You've got their name and their role, and it is important to assign them a role in the story because not all characters are going to require the same amount of research. A protagonist, a love interest, a villain, you'll want to know a lot about them, but other characters who don't play as big a part in the story aren't going to require you to dig as deep. To help you get a handle on exactly how much research to do for a character, you can click this link to see our role guide. This explains a bit more about each role and how much planning we suggest. Because we do have lots of tools at one stop, it's likely that you've created other resources that are related to this character. Maybe it's a story map for their book, uh, a timeline, or even a world building survey. We've created a place here for you to gather all those links. This way you won't have to go searching for them in your workspace when you need them. You can just click what you need and it will open in a new tab. The overview box can be used a number of different ways. Some people use it to jot down notes, information that maybe you couldn't find in the tool and you just collect it here. But the reason that we really added this feature is to offer an opportunity for all different kinds of writers to be able to create characters. We know that not everyone wants to go into great depth when researching. If this is you, you can make your notes here about the character's backstory and you'll have it all in one spot. If you then go to the personality tab, you'll see that the box is empty, so you can fill it in there with all of the important personality information. You can do the same thing to notate their overall behavior patterns and so on. This is one way that the character builder accommodates all kinds of writers, regardless of their process. I'm going to start at the beginning and work my way through linearly, but the beauty of this tool is that you can use it however it works best for you. Maybe you don't know a lot about who your character is. You just know their goal, what they have to achieve by the end of the story. In that case, you might want to start at the motivations tab. As you fill in the information that you know, other pieces of the puzzle are going to fall into place, such as the character's wounding event or key personality traits, and you can then complete those areas of the profile next. You can move forward or backward or jump around depending on what comes to you. This tool really can work however you need it to work for you. So the backstory tab has four sections that cover the different areas of a character's past. The wounding event is first. This section starts with some instructional information on what the wound is. If you click on any of these links, you'll be taken to our terminology page. It's like a glossary where we give you some very basic information about those terms and what they mean in relation to characterization. If you need more information on how that element ties into the whole characterization process, you'll want to check out our tutorials. You can find those throughout the tool in the instructional sections for each tab. If you want to research possible wounding events for your character, hit this Add Wound button, and it will pull all of the entries from the Emotional Wound Thesaurus to give you lots of ideas for brainstorming. If you want to take a closer look at one, just click on it, and it will open that thesaurus entry in a new tab so you can read more about it. I came up with a short list of possibilities, and then I just started to fill them out to see what made sense for my character. This one, I thought, had a lot of potential, so I decided to explore the specifics. This lets me dig a little deeper into that wound and see what it might look like for her. I can see the habits and behaviors that might result from this event. I can see what traits might have come about because of it, even the jobs she might pursue that are connected in some way to this wound. 
whatever I select here is going to add to the character's profile. You can also edit the information if you need to. Just open it up and you can change, tweak, rephrase, or remove any of the text. And of course, you can delete the wound itself if at any time you realize, you know what, this one isn't really applying to my character. Now, you see here that I'm being prompted to choose a primary. One of the things this tool is going to do is create a complete character arc that tells you what happened to your character in the past, who they are right now in the current story, and what they need to accomplish in the future if they're going to be successful. To make this happen, you have to narrow down some of your choices to the one that is the most impactful. The wounding event is one of these areas. So I chose this one. I think that my character caved to peer pressure at some point with disastrous results, and that's the event that is haunting her. This is her primary wounding event. Another important area to explore is your character's deeply rooted fears. This tool will provide you with a set of ideas for what your character's fear might be based on the primary wound that you've chosen. It also does a really good job of breaking down those difficult topics that we have to understand about a character, like the lie. This is something that forms after a painful traumatic event, and it will change how the character views the world or themselves. You can see here that the tool prompts you with ideas of what the lie might be for your character based on the wound that you chose earlier. For Jetta's wound, I chose caving to peer pressure, and all of the lies that pop up here have been pulled right from that entry in the wound thesaurus, so they relate directly to that primary wound. If I change her primary wound, then these lies will change to fit. You'll also want to think about what secrets your character might be hiding. The tool gives you choices broken down by category. All of these options come straight from One Stop's idea generator, so you have lots of secrets that you can edit or delete as you go along. Personality is next. This is where you figure out your character's traits. You have some questions here to help you learn which traits might have developed and where they came from. Then you can explore the traits themselves to see how they may be manifesting with your character. Behavior, this is where you decide how your character is going to act and behave and all the different scenarios you're going to throw at them. Physical details will help you get a handle on your character's appearance, their distinguishing features, things like that. Daily life looks at the character's everyday reality, family, work, hobbies. The talents and skills section pulls options from that thesaurus that can make your character unique and give them skills that will play into the story, helping them get closer to their goal. You can also nut out the details of your character's job using our occupation thesaurus. And in the gallery, you can add images that represent your character or inspire you in some way. Now back to motivations. I'm going to camp out here a little bit because this is really the crux of the tool, exploring your character's outer motivation, that's the story goal, and their inner motivation, why that goal is so important to them. This works just like the wound section. You pick a few motivations that you think are possible, then narrow down the list to the primary one. Like other areas of the tool, if you can't find one that fits perfectly, you can create your own. In Jetta's case, because she caved to peer pressure and failed to stand up for what was right, what she really wants to do is figure out who she is and embrace that. This is her story goal. The inner motivation section is really powerful, so you want to read the instructions carefully and reference the link tutorials and terminology as needed, because this is going to explain why your character is doing what they're doing, and that why is what readers really care about. You fill in a few things here, choosing which kind of arc your character will have in the story, and the important information you've gathered so far will be pulled together to create a character arc blueprint. This gives you a bird's eye view of the character's journey through the story. Check this out. My character was hurt as a result of this wound. Because of that, she believes this lie about herself. Now she is embarking on a journey to embrace a personal identity because she believes that if she can accomplish that, it will grant her the self-acceptance she so desperately needs in order to be fulfilled. These are the stakes, so you know what's going to happen if she's not successful. It even explains how certain things are going to get in the character's way throughout the story, like the fatal flaw. Now, I want to point out a cool feature here. You may be reading over your finished blueprint and you see something that needs a little tweak. It might be a grammatical thing or, or you want to make something more specific to your character. You tick this box and it will turn off the auto population. So while this is clicked, nothing is going to carry over to this section of the tool and you're able to manually make whatever changes you want. When you turn it back on, your changes will have been saved and it's all updated. This is another thing that pantsers may want to pay attention to. Because if you don't want to go through all the different tabs and do quite as much research, you can settle in here and figure all of this out on your own. When you're done writing in the answers for your character, just retick that box and everything will continue to auto-populate as you move forward. Now, as we all know, in real life, when we experience something terrible, we want to protect ourselves from that ever happening again. 
If I was carjacked, for instance, I might avoid the area where it happened, or I might refuse to drive. I might be taking the bus from now on. In fiction, our characters do this too, and we call this behavior emotional shielding. As you work through this profile, the tool will collect the behaviors and attitudes that would be considered emotional shielding for a character who has experienced their particular wounding event. These are all the negative attitudes, beliefs, dysfunctional behaviors that Jetta may have adopted in the wake of her wounding event. I'd like to point out that all of this has been pulled from information I've already collected. Each of these line items are associated with either her primary wound or her negative trait. So these behaviors have been individualized for this exact character. Hidden somewhere in this list is her biggest problem where she becomes her own worst enemy. And if she can't fix it, she will fail to achieve her goal. We call this the fatal flaw. A fatal flaw is actually made of two pieces, a cognitive element and a behavioral element. Basically, it's something the character thinks or believes and then something they do over and over throughout the story. They have to overcome these two things if they want to beat back their demons and retake control of their life so they can be fully realized. All of the character's emotional shielding behaviors and attitudes have been carried over. You're going to mark one as the cognitive piece of the fatal flaw and one as the behavioral piece. For Jetta, the cognitive element is that she believes she's weak and can't stand up to others. And the behavioral element that's keeping her from her story goal is that she's adopted this false persona that's very different from who she truly is. This section tells you exactly what your character needs to change if they're going to win in the story. It's the final piece of the character arc. Now, a completed profile is going to have a lot of information, and we wanted to make an easy way for you to find the important bits. You can do this by creating a PDF summary. Save it to your computer, print it out, or if you're a Scrivener user, you can even export it to your binder. It creates a handy reference containing all the data you've collected. If you need to refresh your memory about a certain aspect, you can click right to that page. And the blueprint is there too for easy reference. And that's how you build a character from start to finish. Our hope in creating this tool is to make character building a little less daunting by showing you how the different elements fit together and making it easier for you to figure those things out for your characters. As always, if you have questions, you can contact us through our connect menu and create a support ticket. Thanks for watching and we'll see you around one stop.